What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to use the extension Flowify to create a couple different shapes bent along some faces. And before we get started I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you'd like to support me, um, make sure you click that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. I've done a few videos on Flowify before. Um, I figured I'd just take another one and just show kind of some some general tips and also just some ideas for curving some things along some faces with the extension and so there's a few things about this that you need to know the first thing about this extension is that the way that you group things is important and so let's go ahead and just create a couple shapes and then I'll talk about what I what I mean so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the sandbox tools to create a grid so there's an option in here in the sandbox tools for from scratch that you're going to want to select and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a one foot grid so i just clicked on the from scratch and then i typed in one foot to set my grid spacing now i'm going to create a five foot wide by 40 foot long grid and so the reason this is important is because we're going to use an extension like either the smooth tool with the sandbox tools or artisan or something like that in order to uh, kind of bend this shape. And so what we need is we need a bunch of intersecting lines in here to create vertices that we can edit. So the way that's going to work is you can take either the smooth tool from the sandbox. And if you do the smooth tool, you probably want to set your radius to 20 feet because if you remember we made this whole thing 40 feet and then we want to come find the middle of this object and you can kind of tell where that is just by just by looking at the edges of this circle and one there we go and then we're just going to center that over this midpoint and we're just going to click once and we're going to move our mouse down and we're going to move this again so if you have an extension like sub D or vertex tools I like the ex the selection options on those a lot better so it's the same kind of thing. You set your radius to 20 feet, and then uh, you use that. You use the selection tool. So in this case, it's the vertex select, and you can see kind of how hard everything's going to drop off with this tool. So everything in red, basically the way these work is they use what's called soft selection, and so what that means is everything in the red is going to get moved as far as you click and move your mouse, while things in like the blue aren't going to get moved as far. So you get that kind of visual indicator. The trade-off is this is a paid extension, um, as is vertex tools, but I feel like they're better for this kind of thing but you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna use the vertex move option and you're just gonna find that midpoint and you're just gonna move this down and so in this case what we've done is we've just created this kind of ribbon shape that drops down well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the extension flowify to bend a shape or a series of shapes along that face and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move our mouse or we're gonna draw two lines straight up um, off the end here so I'm just kind of locking this along the blue axis and I'm just drawing a line up and it doesn't matter how far that line goes the only thing that really matters is that it's coming off that corner and that these are the same length and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a shift click on these two and we're gonna put them in a group and this is part of what's really important um, I'll go ahead and delete out my default model. This is part of what's really important about Flowify is the way that you group things um, is going to be really important. And so we're going to start off and we've done that. Now I'm just going to draw another flat face and we're going to make it, whoops, we're going to make it 40 feet long. And we'll just draw a rectangle just like this. So this is the way that Flowify works is it basically takes a base shape and then a quad shape that you want to bend things along and uh, when you group them together it basically will take whatever you draw on this face in a different group and bend it along here and so the way that you can tell that's working is right now you should have three groups in your model you should have your target geometry you should have your guidelines and you should have your base face and those should all be in three individual groups you can open the outliner to see how many groups that you have and then you're gonna select all three of those and you're gonna right click and you're gonna put all of those in a group so what you should have right now is you should have one group with three groups inside of it and the way you can tell that's working is you can go up to extensions flowify and click impose grid 
And if you get a grid on this face, then you know that that's working. So if you don't get a grid on that face, the odds are you haven't grouped this properly. I'd say 95% of the comments I get on these videos, people tell me it's not working, it's because they haven't grouped everything properly. So make sure you have one group with three groups inside of it. And so now, what you can do is you can draw geometry on top of this. So in this case, I've drawn a little box right here and I'm gonna go ahead and draw, we'll call it a 12-sided circle using the circle tool, just right in the middle. So I'm just kind of using inferencing in order to do this. And you can make the radius for the circle whatever you want it to be. In this case, I'm gonna make it four inches. And one of the tricks that you can use is since this is drawn as a circle, if you don't like how smooth this is, you can click on it and go up into your segments and change that to like 24 sides, which will make this a smoother shape. And so I'm gonna delete out the center of that, but I'm just gonna push pull this up just a little bit. So in this case, we'll call it a half inch. That should be fine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the move tool to make a copy of this. So just click and drag across it, tap the M key for the move tool, click on the corner and then tap the control key to turn copy mode on. If you don't tap the control key, all it's gonna do is move this. If you tap the control key, it's gonna make a copy and then just move over to this corner and go ahead and click. And then we're gonna type in, without clicking anywhere else, we're gonna type in times, we'll call it 40. That has one too many. We'll type in times 39 and hit the enter key. And what that does is that creates 39 copies of this shape. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna click and drag across all of this and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to move this across. And then I'm gonna type in times four and hit the enter key. And that'll make four copies of this. And one thing to note is the smoother you made this circle, the more geometry is in here and the more uh, processor intensive all of this is gonna be. So if you made these like 48 sided circles, this is gonna take a long time. Um, so in this case though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this geometry. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna click make group. And so now, what I have when I use the extension Flowify is I have my group of three objects. So this is all my target geometry. I've got my target face, I've got my, I've got my guidelines, and I've got my face up here. And then I also have a group full of that raw geometry. And by the way, this will not work unless this is all raw geometry. So if these are in here as groups or components, you're gonna get an error message. But now what I have is I have this group down here and then I have my group on the top. And so you're gonna select both of those. You're gonna go up to Flowify and you're gonna click Flowify. And that may take a while depending on how fast your computer is. It's generating a lot of geometry. Basically what it's doing is it's taking this, it's slicing it up along this grid and then it's setting all the parts along this grid. So you can see, or you will be able to see that now all of those shapes are bent along this grid. And so now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna hide I hid my target object and I'm also gonna hide this group up here. And so what I'm left with is I'm left with this shape that's got all these holes along it. So this works with any quad shape in SketchUp. So like, let's say for example, well, we'll do another example over here. Let's say that we have um, I'm gonna use an extension like Bezier Spline in order to do this, if I still have it loaded, I may need to reload it. So this is an extension from Fredo 6 that helps you draw curves. So it's called Bezier Spline. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, you can find that in the extension warehouse. I'll link to it in the notes down below. But we're gonna do the same kind of thing, but in, in this case, we're gonna take a shape and we're gonna put, we're gonna move it along a curve. And so we're gonna use this tool what is it called? I think it's Corbett. And basically what this allows you to do is this allows you to create a curve through a couple points. And so this is close enough for what we're trying to do. So this, uh, basically what we did is we created a, a line that curves around in a circle like this. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the arc tool to draw a face kind of straight up. 
So all we're going to do is we're going to draw a little bit of an arc off to the side, and I'm having some kind of inferencing problem, so I'm going to tap the left arrow key to lock that. So I've just drawn an arc, and I'm going to draw a line straight down in order to make this a face. And then once you've made this a face, you can click on this line to create your path. Click on the Follow Me tool, and then click on this shape. And basically what we did is we extruded this face along this path um, in order to get in order to get another face that we can bend some objects along. And so there's two things you can do from here. You can either erase out these lines, which could get kind of time consuming because you'd have to go in and do it for each one of these little points. Or you can just select this face and just use the move tool to create a copy of it off to the side. And so once you've made a copy of it off to the side, then we can work with it with Flowify. And so if you'll note, this is still a quad shape in that it has four corners. So there's one, two, three, four. It's just kind of bent along a curve. But um, as long as flow, as far as Flowify is concerned, it can bend stuff along this shape. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure our length of our top line. So I'm just going to drag, I'm going to look at this kind of straight up and down and I'm going to select this top line, make sure I didn't get anything else. And then what this will do is this will give me a total length. Um, off to the side. So now I know how long this is. Well, what we're going to do is we are going to first of all we're going to put this object in a group. So I'm just going to I'm just going to double click on it to select everything and I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to click make group. And then the next thing I'm going to do is the same thing I did before where I draw a pair of target lines off to the side. Um, just the same way that we did it before. We'll put those in a group. And then this top line was 48 foot 9.5 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box that's 48 foot 9.5 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse the faces on all of this. The face orientation does matter for Flowify, I believe. So you kind of want whatever's on the white face is probably what's going to get bent along this other white face. And so you can see I've done the same thing where I've created this group over here. So now I have the same thing I had before where I have target geometry, I have my base face, and I have my target lines. And so we're just going to take those and we're going to right click and we're going to put those in a group. And just to make sure everything's working, we're going to go up to Extensions, Flowify, and click Impose Grid. And you can see how I got a grid along this face so we know that it's working. And so now we can do the same thing we did before. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this for a minute. You can come in here and you can um, basically generate whatever shape that you want in here. So like let's say for example that I used Let's say, for example, that I use this polyline art corners in here, and I set my corner offset to 12 inches. Basically, what this is, and I may divide this up first. So we'll divide this into 10 segments. But basically, what this is, is this is a tool that allows you to create We're going to want to split this one up into 10 segments as well. This is a tool that allows you to basically create a curve or uh, draw a series of lines, and then it'll round off the corners. So I'm going to leave this offset to one foot, and I'm just going to draw. You can see I divided that so I had some kind of guidelines in here, so this would be uniform. But I'm just going to draw a series of lines along this face. And we're going to go back. There we go. That didn't look uniform, so I had to go back. There we go. So then I'm just going to right click and I'm going to click done so you can see how I've got this curving shape along here. Well, now what I can do is let's say that I wanted to just create an offset of three inches. Basically, I'm just creating an I'm basically just creating something that I can bend along this face. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this top piece out about two inches and I'm going to push pull the bottom piece out. So basically I'm just generating a shape that I can bend along this face and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that a group. And then I'll unhide my Flowify group. So same thing, I have my group full of the three groups. And then I also have my group of my target geometry. So all I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to go to Extensions, Flowify, and I'm going to click Flowify. And you can see what that did is that took this piece of geometry and that bent that along this face. So, and the one thing you might not like about this, and I'm going to go ahead and move what it created off to the side over here. And probably we'll go ahead and hide the rest of this probably what you're going to want to do in this case with your geometry is you're going to want to use the soften edges tool to soften all of this up because you can see how you have all this extra geometry and so you want to hide that and so all you're going to do is you're going to go over to the soften edges tool in your tray and you're going to click this slider and you can see how as I drag this slider things are starting to hide. Well the other thing we want to do is we want to select this option for soften coplanar. You can see how then that extra stuff um, kind of goes away as well. So now what we have is we have this smooth shape that you are able to bend something along. And so you could do pretty much anything with this. Um, if you wanted to, you could create more of a circle here and just kind of split it in half and then bend something along one side and then the other side. So the only thing that you really need to think about when you're working with Flowify is making sure that you have this uh, this rectangular kind of quad shape, meaning a shape with four corners. As long as you have that, Flowify should be able to bend stuff along it. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, do you like this extension? Have you been using it? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.